Now we are going to look at another very interesting application. In fact, an increasingly important application in NGN, that is IP television. We'll start with the introduction, then we'll look at and touch upon some interesting aspects, including the coding requirements in terms of data rate, the limitations, and then we'd look at the IP television industry as an end to end domain. So, ITUT actually has defined a television standard for uh, IP based networks to offer a variety of services, including to but not limited to the broadcast television as such, video content, audio content, pictures, graphics, and data. So, all this heterogeneous kind of data comes under the umbrella of uh, IPTV. Uh, so the ITUT standard actually recommends certain support services that need to be provided. Uh, for instance, quality of service, quality of experience, interactivity, uh, that is control in the hands of the user. It has to be reliable service. And of course, certain encryption based uh, security mechanism. So IPTV basically is the most natural successor to the broadcast uh, uh, television networks. Um, in fact, before IP uh, television came in, uh, the analog broadcasting had already been replaced with digital TV broadcasting over both terrestrial and cable networks. But uh, uh, bringing it to IP actually requires a whole new set of services. Uh, so digital television as compared to analog is based on data. So it needs a, a higher bit rate uh, compared to other services um, because there's video content and on top of it is superimposed uh, audio in terms of audio channels. So uh, there is a requirement to identify some minimum data rate available on uh, on on the access side and at the core side for that broadband access networks are the most natural contenders to offer this service uh, the coding and coding requirements are such that for a standard uh, uh, definition television uh, the terminology standard definition television is best understood vis-a-vis a uh, high definition television called HDTV. But for now, we'll keep the scope limited to standard definition television. So, ST STTV actually requires a data rate of 2 to 3 megabits per second. Um, now, uh, in a typical terrestrial broadcast system uh, or even cable, we have uh, tuning capability. So, users actually tune in to different uh, channels by switching to that particular frequency. But in IPTV, this is not going to be the case. So users actually are not required to tune in. In fact, users subscribe to a certain um, IPTV stream. And for that, there is a whole mechanism for uh, uh, multicasting. The broadcasting is not affordable in IP-based networks. So multicasting is carried out at the uh, core and the transport networks, that is over long haul uh, networks. Uh, and then on the access side, uh, it is usually the unicasting mechanism which is implemented. Uh, unicasting actually helps um, um, need to do basis delivery. That is, whenever a user is interested in using the video content of a certain service provider, then uh, only then that particular stream is unicast to that particular user. And uh, uh, this is done on the basis of uh, channel to channel, whichever channel the user is currently interested in viewing. So it is not going to be uh, all the time available service. So when a user in an IP based network switches from one IP TV channel one to the second IP TV on channel two, that essentially means stopping the stream of the channel one uh, and initiating the stream of channel two. So, uh, but this again is limited because uh, we have uh, a broadband connection which is shared by uh, telephony services, by non IPTV based interactive applications, and the best effort traffic. So, uh, if you look at the uh, transmission mechanism in IPTV, the basic design and the basic uh, delivery mechanism is such 
that uh, the data rate becomes the upper bound or the limiting factor. So uh, there is a, a limitation to the maximum number of simultaneous channels uh, which can be delivered from the network side to the user equipment. And of course, the limiting factor is mainly the bandwidth uh, and that to the bandwidth of the access side because on the core and the transport side, the bandwidth provisioning is less of a problem. Uh, and it al already is implementing multicasting. But when it comes to, the, uh, to an individual user or a home subscriber, then bandwidth on the access side is a limitation. Uh, so in order to handle, uh, of course, like we switch on a, te a typical television remote, uh, a channel to the, and then we move on to another channel and to another channel. Uh, this actually can be accommodated through an, its equivalent implementation uh, through admission control. So it means that uh, if you look, look at uh, typical uh, DSL kind of connectivity, ADSL, for instance, we have 8 megabits per second on the downlink. Uh, so we can accommodate, uh, say, um, two channels or up to maximum four channels if there's no other service which is running. Uh, but usually two is recommended on the downlink. And the uplink is used for transmission of certain control information. For instance, you want to change the channel from one to the other. So with this, IPTV mechanics are uh, quite clear. Now we need to look at the overall uh, umbrella of IPTV, which actually requires certain domains to be identified. And uh, each domain needs uh, special consideration, investment, uh, design uh, challenges, and of course, a lot of engineering opportunity. So we have the end user side um, that is a, a home subscriber. We have the network provider which is providing the networking infrastructure that is NGN to deliver the content. Then we have the service provider. Service provider is the one that is offering us certain services. It, that means the channels uh, that we are subscribing to are coming from the service provider. And then we have the content provider this content provider is the one that is creating the content, generating the uh, uh, videos and the uh, live and the stream uh, content, for instance, movies, news, sports, etc. And now this particular content provider may have a many to one relationship with the service provider or may have a one to many relationship where we have multiple content providers for a single service provider and a single content provider is in turn connected to multiple service providers. So this is a very interesting way of looking at how uh, the overall domains of IPTV are worth considering.